The Warsaw Rebellion is often considered one of the first modern wars. It is important to note that many of the accomplishments that made the Warsaw Rebellion modern predate the Warsaw Rebellion, and technically, the Crimean War deserves the title far more. However, the Warsaw Rebellion was special in that troops were much quicker and more frequently shuffled around the country to deal with emerging crises. The vast railroad network of the United States permitted the movement of troops and helped in alter the face of war. This will be a five episode series looking at troop movement. This final episode focuses on the movement of the second Colorado Cavalry. was a booming territory in the two years before the war, with the discovery of gold bringing thousands of miners to the front range. Relations between settlers, ranchers, miners, and the native population were strained in Colorado territory. The War of the Rebellion quickly reared its ugly face even for Colorado. Faced with the departure of the regulars from the west and the need to defend New Mexico, the governor of Colorado territory began issuing bonds to great Colorado volunteer units. In early 1862, two independent companies were ready for action at Fort Garland. They became the basis for the 2nd Colorado Infantry and eventually 2nd Colorado Cavalry. By early January, the Coloradians were on their way to Santa Fe to help repulse the Arab invasion of New Mexico, which they gloriously did at the Battle of Glorieta Pass. After the battle victory, the Colorado troopers remained in New Mexico. However, the Second Colorado Infantry quickly gained a reputation of being insubordinate, but they served a purpose against rebel and hostile native incursions into the region. On October 11, the War Department gave the Governor of Colorado permission to turn one of the Colorado Infantry units into a cavalry unit. It was the first Colorado that got mounted. Nevertheless, the second Colorado had two mounted companies within its ranks that did significant scouting work out of Fort Union into the Llano Escargado. They spent months riding and chasing Native Americans. They pursued Comanche at Cimarron Cutoff and visited Kiowa villages in southwest Kansas. In 1863, the second and third Colorado received orders to join Samuel Curtis in Missouri was they were to assist in the suppression of guerrilla activities. In mid-February, two companies of the regiment set off from Fort Union to Fort Lyon, where the rest of the regiment was recovering. It was a long and arduous journey along the mountain fork of the Santa Fe Trail. In early April, six companies of the regiment departed Fort Lyon for Kansas. Two remained behind as garrison. By way of Fort Larned on the Arkansas River, the regiment went, for, went to Fort Riley and then Fort Scott, never actually touching on the regional headquarter in Fort Leavenworth. From there, the regiment went into Indian Territory, where they participated in skirmishes at Cabin Creek, Honey Springs, and Perryville. But much of the suffering was from the unending campaigning that took a toll on the man in the regiment. The decimated 2nd Colorado, as well as the 3rd Colorado, 
benefited from the growing demand for more mounted units to chase rebel guerrillas and deal with native issues on the plains. As a result, General Schofield decided to merge the eight units of the Second Colorado and the five companies of the Third into a 12 company mounted unit, the Second Colorado Cavalry. The creation took place in St. Louis in December 1863. After a brief break from campaigning at the St. Louis Barracks, the regiment was back in action along the border between Kansas and Missouri, helping with the enforcement of General Thomas Ewing's Order No. 11. Some of the merit in the regiment still lacked horses, but the regiment finally received some welcome replacements. The regiment was spread with companies at Pleasant Hill, Harrisonville, Independence, Hickman's Mill, Westport, and Kansas City. The regiment still faced the dilemma of having to maintain sufficient numbers in places to deal with guerrillas, but also spread out widely enough to deal with the same. By April, the regiment spread out even more to cover more ground and locations. A command change in the summer brought new changes, with the regiment concentrating at Pleasant Hill. While the fighting in Missouri and Kansas was ongoing, the situation on the plains and in Colorado deteriorated was hostile factions of, of Cheyenne and Arapaho clashing with settlers. General Rosecrans had promised to release the second Colorado, but stalled on actually doing so. A good decision, as the regiment was needed one more time to deal with Price's raid into Missouri. The Colorado troopers faced the rebel invaders at the Battle of Westport, Moray Signes River, Ozeg, and Newtonia the latter being the regiment's as costly as engagement of the war. For the remainder of the war, the Second Colorado did not face rebel forces, but patrolled Kansas against Native Americans. Parts of the Second Colorado took up garrison at Fort Sarah, Fort Larned, Fort Riley, and Fort Ellsworth. By April, the department commander asked the Second Colorado to prepare for a strike against the Comanche and Kiowas, but the mission was delayed due to rumors from Indian Territory and eventually canceled. On September 23, 1865, the Second Colorado mustered out of service. The Second Colorado is a unique unit in this series. It fought against the rebel invasion in New Mexico, in Indian Territory, in Missouri, and against Native Americans in Kansas. It's a good illustration that the Civil War was not just an engagement in Virginia or in Tennessee, but extended into what historians have described as the Trans-Mississippians of Far West, and which oftentimes historians have dismissed as unimportant. However, these men served an important purpose and very strongly believed in protecting the United States against the rebellion of the South. At the same time, though, the Second Colorado didn't use trains or steamships to move about. They moved on foot or on horseback, thousands of miles across the western plains. Even though this is a modern war, with modern means of transportation available and used, some troops moved a lot the old-fashioned way. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.